Hey, beautiful people, how's it hanging? Of course, you know who it is, Dr. Mike, back again, once again, with another classic, classic video for you guys today. Uh, for many of you guys who just caught the live stream, you guys will know that we were just talking about my monthly expenses here in Davao City. Of course, this here is my monthly expenses revealed and explained part two video version. We're going to go ahead and get to the nitty gritty of it so that you guys don't have to end up watching the entire hour live stream, even though we did have some fun over there. I really enjoyed the video over there. But, you know, of course, if you guys weren't interested in watching the hour long live stream, I wanted to give you guys a quick synopsis of what my daily expenses, monthly expenses are like in Davao City. So we're gonna explain that in this video, do some revelations, but before we do that, first things first, I want you to understand that my budget is inclusive of two, you know? I don't spend just for myself. Of course, when you're in a relationship and stuff like that, you do end up spending, not necessarily double, but you end up spending for two. So keep into consideration that the numbers that I'm going to throw out at you are for two individuals, not just myself personally. And also, I want you to understand that the numbers that I'm going to give you follow along the lines of your physiological needs. Everybody knows about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We're going to focus on that bottom layer. Physiological, food, shelter, <laughs> transportation, miscellaneous and stuff like that, even though transportation is an uh, actual physiological need. We're going to focus on the basics. Always remember that your extracurricular activities, aka the Booty Loo Fund, <laughs> you guys know we like to fuck around with that. Always remember that that particular fund should be separated from your normal daily expenditures, okay? So the budget I'm gonna give you is for your physiological, your day-to-day -day things that you need as a man, even though a little female companionship is, companionship is something that all of us as men need. Ha <laughs> ha, winkity wink. Um, that's not gonna be included in this budget, okay? So let me go ahead and rip this one off like a Band-Aid, <laughs> like I always do, and uh, run the numbers for you real quick, okay? First things first, we're gonna go ahead and get the most expensive one out of the way, uh, which is a $500 Airbnb rental, okay? Now again, if you guys look in the uh, description area below, go ahead and get your $40 off by registering with my name so that you can uh, enjoy your uh, trip to the Philippines, but also get a quick $40 off on your Airbnb if you use the uh, link in the description area below. Of course, get the likes up on the video, highly appreciate it. But yeah, $500 a month at the top end is how much money I spend on an Airbnb per month. So we're looking at roughly about 25,000 pesos or pesos per month, okay? No more than 25,000 per month. I think that the cost of living in Davao City is way cheaper than Cebu and or Manila. I will stick to that to the day that I die. You can always find cheaper places, of course. But with the 25,000, this is strictly an Airbnb. Now, again, if I get, you know, if I choose to stay at my girl's house, then I don't have to pay for an Airbnb rental. That's a little bit different. But of course, you can't really be with your girl like you want to if you, you know, stay with the family around the stuff like that. OK, so just something to keep in mind. But this is just my personal expenses on average, 25,000 at the top end per month for my Airbnb rental. OK, now, again, if. I knew that I was going to stay in the Philippines as long as I did. I probably would have just rented an apartment for roughly about 12 to 15 K. You know, you can definitely look for the signs. You can definitely find a place to rent in the Philippines, especially in Davao City for anywhere between 10 and 12,000. You just got to look around. But, you know, I didn't know that I was going to stay here this long. But of course, when it comes to, you know, stuff like that, like uh, my Airbnb rental, it covers my electricity, my water, my uh, electricity, water, internet, and cable. Okay, so all of that is included in the 500. But of course, if you get you a nice little rental spot for like 12 or 15K, you know, you'll probably have to end up paying separate for the water, utilities, and stuff like that, just depending on the agreement that you would have with the landlord and yourself. You know, just all depends. You can probably get it all inclusive. But even then, I think with the little additives on, like where we stayed at in uh, Davao City, we paid like mo no more than 3000 per month for the electricity. Water was literally 150 pesos per month. Three dollars, literally. And uh, internet was about 1,500 pesos, so roughly about 30 bucks or so. So you can almost imagine to spend roughly about an extra $100. So if it's 
12, and we'll say 15K plus another five, you'll end up paying 20 and end up saving 5,000, you know, if that's the route that you're going. If we're just throwing out quick numbers and doing quick math, okay? So you'll probably end up paying top end of about 20K if your uh, utilities are $100 or about 5,000 pesos or in your rental place is 15K. You'll still come up 5,000 cheaper than what I'm offering you now. You know, just a quick little additive. So that is a way for you to save money. Okay, next topic, we're gonna talk about food. Food for the month. Now this includes uh, going out to eat and this also includes uh, Diet like uh, cooking stuff at the uh, Airbnb. Of course, if you're in a hotel room, can't really do no cooking. So all of the money that you will spend will be on food from the outside. You know, if you like to eat out, such as myself, I enjoy it. I've been enjoying that too much lately. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about doing dishes and stuff like that or making a mess, you know, having to clean up. So sometimes it does become easier to eat out. But I'm telling you where you save your money is when you eat in. I think that combined between eating out like me and my lady, we might eat out three, maybe four times a week, depending. You know, sometimes we get delivery. That's all inclusive. Um, so roughly between eating out and cooking and all of that in between, um, we'll probably spend anywhere around 15,000 pesos per month. Now, that seems like a lot. But again, guys, again, I'm thinking about two people, not just myself. OK, so uh, we did 25 and 15, 40,000 right there, about 40K. That sounds about right. And again, these are just rough estimated averages. I can't actually depict and write down every single thing that I spent on everything because it's hard to keep up with that stuff. OK, now the non physiological need is the transportation. Now, this includes my infamous trike riding. That trike life is for life. Um, it includes jeepney riding and it also includes uh, taxis, all inclusive. Whatever I use to travel from point A to point B, wherever it is I'm going, that is included in this budget. And that really runs roughly about 3000 a month. Now, again, this is for two, not just one. If I'm staying in downtown, my transportation fees are really, 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 really cheap. Um, I can get to anywhere that I want to where I'm staying at my Airbnb cheap. I can walk to a Breeze Mall. It'll take me probably about an eight peso or eight, eight to ten peso or peso ride to get to Gaizano Mall and also the same for going to SM Lanang. So for two people, that's 20 pesos. pesos right in the heart of downtown so we save a lot of money on transportation because we spend the money that we spend on airbnbs but should we choose to you know spend some time at the family house and stuff like that you know whenever there's a celebration or something going on we stay a couple of days there uh the travel downtown and back is going to roughly cost us 100 pesos all together that would be 50 for the both of us to travel there actually 60 because the bike ride for both of us is about 10 pesos each, so 70, I'm sorry, make that 70 backwards and forth. So that's 140 in travel expenses on a daily basis if we stay wherever my young lady's parents stay. So again, you know, there is give and take there. We might have a pre free place to stay, but in order for us to get to where the action is in the heart of downtown, it's going to cost us a little bit more. So on average, I would estimate anywhere between 2,500 and 3,000 pesos per month, okay? So we're doing our math, that's 15, that's 25, which is 40 plus three, 43,000. Bam, right there. Then the rest of the 7K is for miscellaneous prices. Um, that can include anything from loading my phone or whatever I wanted to. So that's 7,000, which is roughly about $150 or so, is just there just to have for whatever purpose it may be used for or for whatever reason it may come up. Again, I can load my phone every, 10 days or so for about 250 because I like to have internet on my phone even though I have internet at the uh, Airbnb I definitely like to have internet on my phone so I might pay 250 every week or so so I would say roughly about a thousand it's just a quick estimate of about a thousand uh, pesos per month for my internet on my phone and for like the load and you know texting and stuff like that so again that's 44 so I'm still left with six grand to spend as I please and that could be for anything but of course that right there is just the budget for the physiological needs so I'm coming in roughly about 50k which is a thousand dollars at this particular current C exchange rate so we're coming out relatively cheap guys we're coming out a thousand dollars a month which is not bad at all so it is possible to live on a thousand a month again I could probably live off a of cheaper if I didn't have such a big expense for the uh, Airbnb but again 
it is what it is. You take it as I give it. And uh, again, like I say, when you're living in a country and you get a feel for it and you get a feel for your area, you'll be able to find the cheaper places. So again, we can always, 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 always look around for cheaper places. I just didn't really care for it because I'm actually happy and content with where I'm at. And eventually, I'm going to have to uh, say bye-bye to the Philippines as always. Eventually, everything comes to an end. So I'm just going to stick it out here until, you know, it's time for me to bounce. So with that being said, I just want to give you guys a quick estimate so we're coming in at about a thousand dollars per month a little under some people say they can live off of 800 which is dope i think that is possible too anything is possible in the philippines guys this all depends on you what you need what you require in life and how well you can get around with doing things but i will tell you that i will always believe in my heart of hearts that davao city is cheaper than manila and cheaper than uh Cebu on any day of the week when it comes to uh, living expenses and things like that. Um, I cannot imagine anybody living in Manila for a thousand pay a thousand dollars. I'm sorry, a thousand dollars a month. Tell me anybody that can make that work, and I will be shocked because uh, Manila is very very expensive in my book, and I don't think or ever see it getting any any cheaper. Okay. So with that being said, I hope that this video was quick enough for you guys just to get a quick synopsis of a monthly budget report from yours truly. I never did a monthly report, so I owe it to you guys. I did the Manila monthly thing. I mean, that was yeah, it was about a month or so, but, you know, I didn't have to pay rent there. And then, you know, going out to eat and stuff like that at the expensive places, you know, I kind of would get treated or something like that. So it wasn't really a fair assessment you know of my real monthly budget but for me spending for two people now remember I'm spending for two if you're living by yourself you'll definitely come out cheaper you should come out cheaper the only thing that you can't change is the simple fact that you know your Airbnb or wherever you're gonna stay is usually a fixed cost okay so food for thought look for you a cheap place and you'll definitely be able to make moves with a larger budget and with that being said the good doctor is officially out which means we are going now bye bye as always love you guys peace